All right, we put a firewall in here. And after the firewall, you mount the first cow, the boot cow, and you have to trim it off. You mount it flush with the front of your firewall here. You mount it flush there. And then once you get that and the, the underside here fits, once you get it fit the way you want it, well then you mark this edge here. Mark this edge all the way up. Uh, I put it just a hair inside that you can kind of see the rounded edge. I moved it, instead of being flush, I moved it in just a, I don't know, big sixteenth or an eighth, something like that in between those. And cause I didn't want it when you're getting out, you don't, I don't want to snag that, that particular piece, which I sanded it, I mean, it's super smooth. So we've got it all. Get all the hose drill riveted on, and of course that'll get mounted permanently later when we're, I don't know, if, when we're working on the windshield or what. But next thing on the list is to put the rest of this firewall together. I have to put these end caps in here. Here's one of them. They're already pre-made for you and bent. So I just have to put it in there and drill the hose, uh, put some kind of sealing on it, it says, and then rivet it in place, and that'll close off our firewall section from the engine. And I have to drill the, you have four motor mount hose here, which I have just bolts in to hold the firewall up here while I'm working on it, but there's a fifth one down here that is not drilled. So I have to locate and drill it. And, uh, once we get all that done, I think we're about ready to put a motor mount on here. Okay guys, I got these end plates drilled and clicoed in place. I've got to take them off now, deburr, and uh, find some rivets. And I think you need I'm supposed to seal them also, so I'll do that. Uh, i just like to reiterate my joy of stainless steel drilling. Just remember when you're doing this job to repeat after me. Drilling stainless with a hand drill is fun. Drilling stainless with a hand drill is fun. <clears throat> yeah, you understand when you get here, but uh, I had this piece of hardwood and you can reach in here behind all this stuff and poke it up here, which you just, you have to. You cannot drill this stainless without having a back plate. This is one of the few days I have not had a helper with me. And uh, so I'm <clears throat> doing like uh, a lot of you guys working by myself. <laughs> it's a lot more fun with somebody. But anyway, I can hold that in there and then drill against the hardwood. And you just, you have to do something like that because there's just no way to hold this thin metal behind, behind this doubler when you're putting it on here. But Anyway, we got them all drilled, clicoed. We're ready to seal them up now and get some uh, rivets in them. So we'll get that done. Alrighty, they're on. Got the ends capped. Ready to go to the next deal. I've got to drill a hole right here somewhere. There's a threaded stud in there and I've got to drill a hole. I've got to find it, mark it, and drill it for a 5 16 bolt. We'll see what we can do. Alright guys, got some motor mount on. That uh, my builder friends said it usually takes about a 6 foot 2 before. <laughs> They weren't lying too much. That's about what Susan needed to pry them in place for me to get the bolts in the last two over here, but they flex pretty good. Well, they flex really hard, but they're in there. All torqued down, sealed up. Okay, we're getting a lot, a lot of plumbing and stuff done. 
We got the fuel pumps on. We got everything plumbed up. The fuel system is plumbed up out externally. Uh, we have to run lines back to the tank there. Uh, main thing we're trying to get everything in to hang the engine. Uh, we've got heater hoses, outlets there, fuse box goes on there, brake tank goes there. All that can be done. Uh, we've got a couple bolts ordered for the motor mount. The ones they send you are too short. So you have to buy your own. <laughs> All right, we got uh, got the brake lines all put in. We side just go ahead and hook it up, and we got the uh, canister on here. So we went ahead and filled up like the book said to use a CC syringe here, and we stuck it on the bottom. On here, opened the valves, uh, pressed all the fluid from the bottom, all the way up until we got this half full, and then we did the same thing on the other half. And we had just a little, very little air. We bled both sides out a couple times, and we got good pedals right now, so we're gonna stop and see. Uh, we're checking for leaks right now. I don't see any leaks, hopefully. But uh, we'll see. I think we're ready for a. I've got to, re got to do something with these lines here. I'm trying to figure out where to fasten them down to. But we've got the brakes on and working. So that's that's a good thing. See, we put some Synergy suede on the center piece here. I was putting all these pieces on here. And hooking everything up, and I thought, boy, it'd be a lot easier just to get these where I can work and stay. So we went ahead and got her got her uh, got her trimmed out there with the synergy suede that's going to be on there. And now when we put uh, the fuel shut off, I think that's all we got left. So this is a parking brake up here. That's the tail wheel, and then we have a a uh, Gas shut off there, and electric trim goes in there. But we can go ahead and plumb, plumb everything up to stay, theoretically. <laughs> you know how that is. Trying to get things where we're not having, to, not going to come apart again. Hopefully for a while, we'll see. So that's where we're at right now. I set the brakes and turned the parking brake on about 24 hours ago, and. Everything's still dry, no leaks in the brakes, so yeah, we're happy about that. <laughs> 